Well, bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh How are you guys? I hope you all guys in a good condition And we will see as soon as possible And this pandemic is over And here uh, First of all uh, Let's trust our first regat on Mekti And uh, thanks for the time had given me uh, Had given to our team or our group to present a presentation it's about language variation focus on uses and i will tell you and introduce you to our group the first one is area pragianti and the next one is faisal Putra, it's me and the next nani astuti next neural guardian Resti Hidayat and the last one is Reza Nur Safitri and we are from group 3 and okay enjoy it, our presentation I hope you guys can understand well what we have uh, present in this presentation Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh um, I'm going to deliver my material about style So what is the style? Style according to Holmes Style is language variation which uh, reflects change in situational factor such as addressy, settings, tax, or topic and it means a style not a social or regional dialogue but a variety of language used for a specific purpose and style are often analyzed along a scale of formality as an in the example from social dialogue research and the next material about uh, the factors the influence of style there is a uh, the first one there is addressy, the second age, and the last background. Addressy is someone who is receiving the message to listener, usually seen from the listener familiarity or background. Uh, like when we talk with a friend, we use casual style or informal language. And then when we talk with a older, we should use more formal style and polite language. About age, it's people generally talk differently to children and adults. Example, the language used uh, when dealing with five years old children. For example, kid, let's eat first. Different uh, between the language used in adults like that after finish eating don't forget to take the medicine the last material about the background um, people generally talk differently to the higher class and the lower class for example the style of language we use to ordinary people who were in the street in contrast to the way we walk to people who have higher education so i think enough for my presentation uh, and the next material will be present by reza rusafitri okay i will continue the next explanation for the next material is about context context is important key for style because with the context we can arrange the best way to communicate with people or community and in a context they have five kind for the first kind is about formal context and social rules speech changes according to context style and class context in here it's like a settings because we can set things our style speech in one situation for example in a formal business meeting, someone has to address his client or boss name with title and full name. 
And for the second example, a radio or TV announcer change his or her style of speaking to accommodate the listeners or viewers. In here, we can see the differences between two between both of the example. And for the second kind, is about different style with an interview. When strangers meet, they would use most carefully style of speech. It means that in one situation or in one context or in interview context, they will use a different style. For example, if the interrogators give some questions to the informants and they want the informants to answer the question, For example, if they want the informants answer the question about to tell the story from his or her work experience or his or her hobbies, they will use a uh, informal style or more relaxed. While if they want the informants to introduction his or herself, they will use a formal style. So, in an interview context, they will use different style according to the situation or according to the context. And the next kind is about the interaction of social class and style. In Norwich, data reported by Trugill 1974, the more formal style someone was using, the more ing they use rather than in. And the data also relove that the higher social class, more standard from the use, or for example, more ing. Mm, and the fourth is about hypercorrection. What is hypercorrection? Hypercorrection is when someone use a form that is beyond the standard, and hence they use a wrong form instead. For example, between you and I. And the second example is he asks for you and I. Uh, the use of I rather than me in his contractions uh, illustrate structural hypercorrection. And for the last kind is about non-Western society, such as Japanese has a special set of grammatical constraint for expressing politeness and respect and respect for others. And they assess their status on the basic of family background, gender, age, and the formality of context. The next material is about register. Register is the typical style associated to certain groups of speakers. Register refers to particular way of using language in particular settings within that community. Register is a set of linguistic items associated with discrete exceptional and social groups. Or register is language used at any given moment and depend on what do you do, by whom, and by what means. So, register is a variation of the language accorded to its use. Okay, for example, the first one is Doctors talk about symptoms, postnatal syndrome, etc. Second, legal documents have certain ways of paragraphing, sectioning, pressing, etc. The third is sport announcer. Sport announcer talk. A. Synthetic reduction. It bonds to second base. Federer is looking rather surprised b synthetic in person in com jackson slowly rattling the ball is made c happy non modification yao this gigantic young man from china wo d routines and formulas horse racing commentators have different routines for the start or locating horse name
Okay, my name is Eri Prajayanti. I will explain about speech function. Language serves a range of function. It is usually adjust the speech to suit the social context of speech. There are some ways to categorizing the function of speech, such as first expressive utterance express the speaker's feelings it used to express personal feelings ideas and opinions this expression are submissive to social factors and to the nature of expression as negative or positive for example i'm happy today it is positive expression Second is, I'm afraid, is negative expression, and I'm very gloomy tonight, is negative expression, and the last example is, I'm feeling great today, it is positive expression, and the second is, directive adherence, attempt to get someone to do something, directive are concerned with getting people to do things which express directive force very in strength directive function can be articulate by imperative sentences integrative interrogative sentences as well as declarative sentences orders and comments are usually expressed in imperative form for example sit down it is imperative sentence could you sit down it is interrogative sentence and I want you to sit down it is declarative sentence in social factors can influence in expressing directive such as the social distance between participants higher social status tend to express imperative then interrogative and declarative interrogative and declarative are considered more polite for example open your book now and the second is do your assignment now Second is relative status. People who are close friends or intimate use more imperative. For example, shut up you fool. It's for it use between friend and set the table fin. It is used between family member. And the third is formality context. Oven uses declarative to express the utterance because it is more it is more polite. For example, now I call a peace counselor to read the citation for our distinguished guest. And the second, to all the guests and the audience, please have a seat. And the last is gender. Woman, woman tend to express more polite and less direct form of directive than men. In a study of doctors, doctors directive to patient, male doctors typically use imperative, while female doctors use less direct forms. For example, male doctors say eat more fruit while female doctors say maybe you could try fresh fruit for dessert and the third category is differential adherence provide more information politeness in this adherence depend on intonation tone of tone of voice and context too for example the second presenter will be Miss Resty. And the second example, makeup 
speaking class will be held on Monday at 1 p.m. And the fourth category is metalinguistic adherence, comment on language itself. It is used to describe part of language such as grammar or word that describe language itself. The principal purpose of metalinguistic is to make sure that the addressee understand the meaning of the code which the addresser is using. For example, poetic art is the art of writing a literary work. Take an example, stylistic is science about language, style in a literary work. And the fifth category is poetic adherence, focus on aesthetic features of language such as rim, rhyming words or we call as pantun, alliteration of par or paranomasia, and antithesis, or we call it as matches. For example, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. And the second example, skinny cat take a bed on the board. Name board made of jati tree. Skinny body is not because of lack of food, but thinking of the sweetheart. And the last category is patic utterance or social function. Is it is expresses solidarity and empathy with others. It is one of the most common speech in everyday interaction. It consists of greetings, compliments, gossip, and etc. For example, uh, when the people say, please come in, or mari singgah dulu, in Indonesia, in Indonesia, we often hear please come in, in daily conversation, and it serves a social function too. The offering is usually done by a speaker to someone which they are familiar with. It can be their friend or their neighbor. Sometimes someone over their friend or neighbor to drop in their house, but they actually doesn't mean so. They just say the word to express that you are my friend. Okay, I think that's all for me. Thank you. Okay, my name is Nania Stuti. Here I will continue the presentation from my friend before. It's about politeness. Politeness is an expression of concern of the feeling of people. Generally speaking, politeness involves contributing to social harmony and avoiding social conflict. You can look at the picture. It they are kind of politeness words and next to it for example a we take the words please for example children are told to say please when they are making requests as a way of expressing themselves politely you can see on a a1 and a2 but different with uh, adults, use please for less than one might suppose, and when they do, it often has the effect of making a directive sound, less polite and more peremptory. You can see on the B1 and B2. Next, compare the pairs of utterances in example B. For instance, as always, a great deal depend on intonation and tone of voice, but clearly, please does not necessarily increase the politeness of these directives. On example B, show more specifically, linguistic politeness involves discourse strategies or linguistic devices, which are 
perceive or evaluate by other as having been used to maintain harmonious relation and avoid causing trouble. Why? Because in the conversation, use uh, address form. Address forms is like it's like someone's special call that sounds more interesting. Next, politeness has to type. They are positive politeness and negative politeness. Positive politeness is solidarity oriented. It emphasizes shared attitudes and values. Example, show interest in hearer. There, Juleha, could you open the windows and focus on the there, Juleha word? Oh no, press there, Juleha. It is show interest in here, right? Okay, and then claim common ground with hearer. Example, hey Matt, you and I have the same problems. Let's do it together. It usually you, you or I use to our friends. Next, six agreement. Hey Matt, can you lend me a, a dollar? It's one of solidarity oriented. And the last, give sympathy. For example, she looks sad. Can I do anything? It like you give a attention on your friends or your boyfriend maybe. Second, negative politeness. Negative politeness pays people respect and avoids intruding on them does not equal lack of politeness or rudeness example be conventionally indirect for example could you open the windows it uh, show you more uh, polite next minims imposition in here for example i just want to ask you if I could use your computer, it usually applies to people applies to people in high care position. Next, ask forgiveness. For example, excuse me, could you open the windows? Yep, it's usually you apply to your lecture so as not to often and the last give difference for example sir could you open the window it's like respect to other next address form address form is like how do you address people or call people by people first name by last name by nickname by some combination of this example 19 you can read that focus on the word my love in a and be focused on the director word. In the north of England, many newspaper vendors, bus, conductors, and people selling railway tickets call every, everyone love, regardless of how well they know them, and of them regardless of their gender. By contrast, mutual TLN like Mr. Landy, Mr. Dunson, is usually between upper working class neighbors who live 
close to each other, but who are not friends and do not see each other socially. Next point, linguistic validness in different culture. First, it can be miscommunication. I take an example when Sally, an American and Rio who come from Indonesia, meet and suddenly Sally touch Rio head, who was older. Automatically, Rio feels annoyed because in Indonesia, the head is a sacred symbol of the human body. Just touching the assumption is rude and unethical treatment. Next, learning another language. It includes studying other culture, but many people think that through language or speech, a culture reflects the character of that culture. For example, the Bataknes and Sundanes language. Batak is famous for its high speed, so people think that Bataknes people are fierce and Sundanes people who speak softly so that people think that their heart must be also be soft. But it all depends on itself. Next, sociolinguistic assumption. I think by looking at the picture, you all understand because the context, the context is the same as the previous two points. Cultural difference that thinks smoking is cool, like usually French culture. But Chinese pe- people think otherwise. Next, acceptance and refusal and invitation. You can see uh, the conversation. In Western culture, can be a challenge. Text. How do you refuse an invitation to a meal from somebody, someone who is your social superior? An excuse is mandatory. mandatory. And it needs to be plausible and reasonable specific. In some culture, there are very general fetch formulas such as I'm busy that night and I'm afraid, which are perfectly acceptable. But in many Western communities, people expect to be provided with a more specific reason for a refusal. Where solidarity is the dominant social dimension, privacy is reduced and vagueness about one's activities is seen as evasive. Being polite in such context involves knowing how to express a range of speech function in a cultural appropriate way. Well, that's the my presentation, and the next material will be presented by my friend. Well, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I am Faisal Duputra, and here I would like to to continue the presentation by my friend, and I'll talk about course culture communication, and here. We talk about cross culture and communication exactly. And okay, the the first slide is culture. The definition of culture is group which shapes of a person, values, and identity. And we know that culture is formed by several things like race, ethnic, gender, class, and religion, country of origin, and geographic region, and many else. Okay, the next slide is uh, six fundamental patterns of cultural differences. Okay, uh, here we have different communication styles, different attitudes toward conflict, approaches in completing tasks, decision making style, attitude toward disclosure, and approaches to knowing. Okay, the next one is uh, communication. Communication is draw on speech patterns, language, and nonverbal message, or interactive. 
Okay, the next one is uh, the definition of cross-culture communication. Cross-culture communication is a field of study that looks that looks at how people from different cultural backgrounds communicate in similar and different way among themselves and how they adventure to communicate across culture. Okay, the next one is cross-culture. We know that there are so many elements of cross-culture and it's like uh, language, nationality, sex, education, profession, ethnic group, religion, social class, corporate culture, family, village, norm, attitude, folkways, custom, and many else. And I believe you guys understand what the meaning or the definition of the age custom value in the slide. And if you want to ask me uh, about it, you can ask on the WhatsApp group. Okay, the next one is uh, why is it important? Why the cross culture and uh, communication important to learn? Because it for business opportunities, job opportunities, globalization, sharing of views and ideas, talent improvisation, understanding of diverse market and else. And the next slide is about how the cross-culture communication works the first one is eye contact well eye contact some cultures in the world looking people in the eyes is honesty and strike forwardness and in others it's it is seen as challenging and rude for the example in us if you have good eye contact with a person it generally signifies that you are interested in the person in the middle east eye contact is much less common and considered less appropriate in many asian african and latin american cultures extended eye contact can be taken as in a front or a challenge of authority and in western europe it is considered proper and polite to maintain almost Con constant eye contact with another person well the next one is gestures okay a movement of part of our body especially a hand or the head to express an idea or meaning uh, for the example in Egypt uh, like like in the picture like in Egypt uh, the picture like this is be patient and in Italia uh, it means what do you mean and in Greece uh, that's just perfect the next one is touch okay Islam and Hinduism uh, like when you're touching with left hand is insulting and colors the next one is colors colors a single color can have many different meanings in different cultures in asia in asia orange is a, a positive spiritually enlightened and life affirming color in u.s it is a color of road hazard traffic delays and fast food restaurant green is considered the national color of islam it is also the national color of Egypt and green is also a symbol of Ireland green is a strong trend in the Irish holiday St. Patrick's Day and it's like China blue colored caps are associated with death and the next one is clothing traditional clothing is an important part of a region's history and identity men tend not to wear sweet suit jackets and ties and ties in colombia and the middle east the traditional dress for an indian woman is a uh, sari gulf countries women have to wear parda and compulsive for every woman who visits saudi arabia Western countries 
uh, the women can wear what they want. The next one is greeting. Greeting, it's like uh, Westerners always start with a handshake. Most Latinos are more accustomed to physical contact. People from France, Spain, Italy, and Portugal greet friends by kissing on both cheeks. And Indians usually collide their hands for greeting others. And the next one is about improving cross cultural communication. Okay, how to improve in cross cultural communication? First, you have to recognize cultural variation and learn about cultures in the world, remove language barrier, help others adapt to our culture, write and speak clearly, improve communication skill, listen carefully, respect style preferences, uh, and maybe I will give you the tips for effective cross-cultural communication. Uh, the first one is slow down uh, when you are speaking avoid negative questions separate question uh, take turns write it down be positive check meanings and avoid slang and i will close my presentation with a sentence from george bernard shaw he said that the reasonable man adapts himself to the world the unreasonable one persists in trying to adapt the world to himself. Therefore, all progress depends on the unreasonable man. George Bernard Shaw. Okay, maybe that's all for me. And uh, we are so sorry from all of the mistakes that we have made. And and I do apologize uh, for any information. Uh, that may be unclearly in my pers in our presentation and I think that's all Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh